Today, we're gonna turn a furnace motor and a car alternator into a machine that can self-sustain and can create energy. First, we need to reverse the counterclockwise spin to the opposite direction. Run the screwdriver across the capacitor terminals to discharge. This is one way to reverse a non-reversible furnace motor. Now the motor is spinning in a clockwise position versus counterclockwise. I'm using a three-way light switch to give the motor a two-speed control. For this particular motor, the blue wire is for medium speed and the red is for low speed. And the white wire is for the common and the green is for ground. I've opened up the alternator and soldered these three wires for the AC power. I left the DC power and the two terminals alone. Here are the two places for the ground connections. This black wire will be connected to the negative side of the battery terminal. This white wire is for the ignition key. And this wire is the sense wire. For this setup, I'll connect it directly to the output of the DC power terminal. We're almost complete with the setup. This is a furnace motor with one third horsepower with about 1100 RPM max. This is a refurbished car alternator. I believe at 6000 RPM or higher, it can put a maximum output of 55 amps. Let's take another look at how the wires are set up. The sense wire is directly connected to the output of the DC terminal. These three wires are connected directly to the AC power source right before the rectifiers. This is the first test run. The car battery is used to supply the power to the 7500 watt inverter. The inverter then supplies the power to the furnace motor. The motor drives the alternator. Then our hope is for the alternator to generate enough amperage and voltage to recharge the car battery with excess AC power to run our home appliance. Let's take some initial readings. The pulley spins around 1130 RPM at the lowest speed. At medium speed, it spins around 1140 RPM. And the battery reading is about 12.5 with just the inverter on. Let's take a look at how much amperage the furnace motor draws. At medium speed, it draws about 0.22 amps. At low speed, it draws about 0.20 amps. The alternator puts out about 2.7 amps with 11.65 volt DC, which is too low to keep the battery charged. The alternator puts out about 9.7 volt AC. 9 volt AC is not enough to run an appliance, but we probably could turn on a light bulb and light up the room. These are 24 volt transformers. We're going to combine the two in series to make a step-up transformer. 
and hopefully we get at least 110 volts. Our goal is to get 110 volts to light up this light bulb. We're connecting our homemade step-up transformers to these output AC lines. The furnace motor was not designed to put under a heavy load like this. We'll have to help it a little bit to get it started. <laughs> and the lights is on! The alternator should continue to provide the AC power output to the light bulb, even if I unplug this positive terminal to the alternator. And yes, it is still providing the AC power to the light bulb. At this point, the alternator is not generating enough DC power voltage to keep the battery charged, but it helps to unload the inverter power consumption when the alternator is running. To keep the battery charged, we need more DC output from the alternator. Let's try to do that. We'll use this 3 to 1 ratio pulley versus 1 to 1 ratio pulley. Hopefully we have enough speed for the alternator to produce higher outputs. Wow, this looks promising. With no load, it reads 2570 RPM. Let's see what happens when we excite the alternator or energize the alternator. It appears that the pulley configuration is just way too high for this furnace motor. Even when I switch the motor power between low, medium, and high, the load is just too much for this furnace motor to handle. Let's try to reduce the pulley from 3 to 1 ratio to 1.5 to 1 ratio. The furnace motor sounds like it's working its maximum power. A 1.5 to 1 pulley ratio is all this motor can handle. And we got a good decent reading for the RPM, 1464 versus 1130 on the previous setup. Let's start the ignition and take some new readings, shall we? Wow. And oh my, we got 14.84 volts. That's enough DC juice to keep the battery charged. Let's take a reading of how much amperage this new setup is putting out. And it's pushing out about 4.63 amps. With the current setup, it puts out about 12.34 volt AC. That's not enough power to run a house appliance, but that would be plenty of juice to run a couple of lamps from one of each of those AC phases. Here is a desk lamp that is connected to this light bulb using the same AC phase output and the same homemade step up transformer. The battery positive cable is connected to the alternator. It should automatically excite the alternator when the furnace motor starts to spin. With this machine, we can light several lamps for as long as the furnace motor can handle. The next modification, I will try to make this machine to run a household appliance. Well, if you made it this far, you are a mighty legend. Don't forget to hit that like button and thank you for watching.